we're continuing on our discussion of non-infectious causes of reduced reproductive performance in cattle. We've covered um, a, a, quite a few topics so far and um, in this lecture we're going to look specifically at the effects of heat stress on reproductive performance in cattle. The thermoneutral zone for cattle is, is somewhere between 23 and 27 degrees Celsius. As the temperature and humidity increases the ability of cows to offload any excess heat becomes more limited. The only way that they can get rid of heat is through radiation, conduction and convection. But with increasing temperatures the abilities of these mechanisms to dissipate excess heat becomes restricted. As the internal core temperature of the cow rises this will have an adverse effect on physiological process such as rumen function and also have a detrimental effect on oocyte quality and embryo viability and this is where reproductive performance starts to be affected with an increase at in the level of heat stress. Dairy cows are particularly susceptible to heat stress because they have a lot of internal heat production associated with the synthesis of milk. They also have a high feed intake to try to sustain the level of energy that they need to produce the, the quantities of milk that they produce and so they have a high metabolic rate which is, results in a high internal um, generation of heat, so internal, a high internal heat load. As temperatures begin to increase you'll find that cows breathing rate or respiratory rate starts to increase. They'll start to seek shade they'll stand up more, they'll lower their feed intake, they'll start to crowd into sources of water such as water troughs, they'll become a little bit more agitated and restless, rumen contractions will begin to reduce if, and, and eventually stop. Eventually they'll start to show evidence of open mouth breathing and panting they'll drool excessively and this excessive loss of saliva means that less saliva is available for buffering the rumen pH so they're more susceptible to um, have to suffer from subacute acidosis. Eventually they'll go down and be unable to move and then eventually they'll die. This is a temperature humidity warning chart that has been produced by the University of Arizona. What it shows is that as temperatures increase there's an increased risk of heat stress. Now this is exacerbated also by an increase in humidity. So cows can tolerate sort of higher temperatures up to a point but as the, as the humidity increases their ability to tolerate um, those temperatures decreases and they become more stressed. So for example a temperature of say around 30 degrees at a low um, uh, humidity, cows can tolerate reasonably well, although not for very long as you can see. Temp the humidity only needs to rise a little bit and you can see they're starting to get into mild to moderate stress situations. But as the humidity at 30 degrees rises above 80 percent, they get into a moderately severe stressed condition. And this is, you know, frequently the case in Townsville in the um, in the wet season. Temperatures will be in this level, sometimes even higher, and occasionally we'll get up into the severe stress uh, stress um, circumstances. You can see as uh, temperatures rise in the face of very high humidity, then there's there's a lot possibility that cows could even die at these high rates. So you can, the, the level of stress that cows are exposed to depends on the breed, um, how much milk they're producing, the temperature and the humidity. So all of these factors will um, contribute to how much heat stress cows are being exposed to. So this is just showing um, various zones in which you could classify um, the environment that cows are exposed to. The so-called thermoneutral zone. Um, in this area cows are quite comfortable. Um, they're able to dissipate excess heat. Their internal body temperature doesn't rise. 
as temperatures rise above the thermoneutral zone in the order of 23 to 27 degrees um, cows begin to get hot and their internal body temperature may rise and cows must use energy in this phase to actually, to actually cool down so they have to actively expend energy to cool down their feed intake will drop as well to try and help reduce the amount of um, internal heat that they're producing. Heat loss occurs by conduction, convection and radiation. Obviously um, cows don't usually lose too much temperature through to the ground. They've only got a small surface area in contact with the ground. And, and as the temperature rises, the ground temperature also can get uh, quite hot. So the ability to lose uh, body temperature through conduction is, is virtually limited and, and, and doesn't occur at higher temperatures. The same with um, convection and uh, radiation. As, temperature, as higher temperatures um, uh, develop, the only wa effective way that cows can lose heat is by evaporative sweating or evaporation and so this is why you'll see cows panting a lot uh, to try and get rid of um, excess body temperature through pant through evaporation this has implications for how we cool cows down once the temperature gets very high the really only effective means of cooling them down is to just saturate them with water if, if that's possible This is a summary of some of the consequences of heat stress in cows. Our fertility will be reduced um, when they're heat stressed. And this is particularly severe um, in around the days from uh, just before the onset of heat, a day before um, heat, to about six days following um, the onset of heat. So in the first week or so um, following ovulation and a day before ovulation, cows are most susceptible to heat stress. This is where the most severe negative impacts on reproductive performance will occur. You'll also get a reduction in the duration and intensity of estrus. Cows are less willing to show heat when they're heat stressed. In the case of bulls, they're not, they don't escape heat stress as well. Their semen quality will be negatively affected. You'll get a reduction in feed intake and ability to digest nutrients. You get a reduction in milk production and milk quality. So there's an increase in somatic cell count amongst other changes in milk quality. And you'll have a negative impact on cow health. It's a decrease in immune function and a decrease in the buffering capacity of the rumen. So you get an increase in subclinical acidosis occurring. And we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail in the following slides. What are the imp impacts on fertility? Well, if you're breeding over the summer period um, where cows are frequently heat stressed, for example, up on the Atherton Tablelands during the summer period, you'll get a reduction in six week or 100 day in calf rates. You get an increase in the number of cows that are not pregnant at the end of the breeding season, so an increase in not, not in calf rates. Cows will show heat for a shorter period of time and will mount other cows and be mount, allow themselves to be mounted less. So you get a decrease in the length and the intensity of heats. You get a reduction in conception rates, an increased risk of embryo death occurring, and a decrease in calf birth weights and viability also occurs, particularly in the third trimester of gestation. So these are the quite severe economic um, effects of heat stress on reproductive performance. You get a decrease also in um, the amount of uh, food that cows will eat. You'll get an increase in the energy requirements for cows to maintain their energy. So they're going to have to use energy to uh, try to dissipate the extra energy that they're, new, they're using. Their feed consumption will drop, dry matter intake will drop by 10 to 20 percent in the short term and also perhaps in the long term depending on the length and duration of heat stress. They'll salivate more and you'll get a decrease in rumination and cud chewing. And so you get reduction in the buffering um, that's occurring 
in the rumen so you get an increase in the acidity of the rumen fluid you get a decrease in the cow's ability to digest and absorb nutrients so there's a negative impact on cow nutrition during periods of heat stress milk production will also drop by 10 to 25 percent or more depending on the level of heat heat stress in severe cases it might drop by 40 percent milk composition will also be affected milk percentage milk protein percentage will decrease milk fat percentage is a little bit variable from day to day but may be severely depressed if ruminal acidosis occurs associated with heat stress so a reduction in milk quantity and a reduction in milk quality you may get an increase in sediment on cows teats as they seek out water or dams to, to stand in and this may result in more mud or manure sticking to the teats of cows this may increase the risk of that an udder get a mammary gland is infected and you also you tend to get an increase in somatic cell counts some of the negative impacts on cow health include a decreased rumen buffering capacity so potential for an increase in rumen or, uh, sorry a decrease in rumen pH as it becomes more acid there's an increased risk of ruminal acidosis and ketosis an increased risk of laminitis associated with the increased ruminal acidosis a decrease in immune function and an increased risk of mastitis so a number of things that can happen which uh, negative impact on cow, have a negative impact on cow health this is just summarizing some of the general consequences of heat stress cows will start to pant they'll chew their cud less they'll drool saliva there's less saliva going into the rumen reducing the rumen buffering capacity of the rumen you get a, a drop in rumen pH resulting in acidosis or subclinical acidosis and also you get a reduced um, milk yield this is a more detailed picture of what all the things that might be going on um, associated with heat stress in one study they estimated that it could cost up to 403 euros per cow per year associated with um, um, heat stress this is some data from uh, other countries showing that um, in the US summers um, which is opposite to our, the time of period to our summers you'll get a reduction in the duration of estrus and you'll also get a number of reduced mounts that cows are experiencing during during estrus so in summer they're being mounted less often compared to in winter this also applied to Jersey cows as well as Holstein Frisians so a reduction in the duration and the intensity of estrus this is showing um, an example of the percentage of cows that have that are not detected in estrus so the farmers missing their heats and this the frequency of missed heats tends to increase over the summer period um, in, this is in Florida um, in the summer period this is just illustrating um, changes in pregnancy rates across the year um, and you can see in Florida and Arizona during the summer months there's a decrease in pregnancy rates per insemination so a decrease in fertility this also occurs in South Africa um, the, the, the extent to which it occurs in a state such as Minnesota that doesn't experience the severe summers of Florida and Arizona you can see but, but there's still some reduction during the summer months even though that it's, it's of lesser severity this is a study done on the tablelands in North Queensland it showed that there was a reduction in conception rate as the temperature humidity index increased so as the temperature humidity incre increased um, you found that conception rates decreased by about 20 percent this is uh, cows that um, are in that sort of hot humid conditions during the summer period and conception rates um, were notably less 
So what are the consequent reproductive consequences of heat stress? Well these include a reduction in RSO at competence, a reduced development competence of the embryo, so once the fertilization occurs, the ability of that embryo to keep continue to grow is compromised. So you get retarded embryo development and an increase in embryonic loss rates. And embryos are at greatest risk to heat stress approximately 24 hours after estrus, particularly in that first week after um, ovulation. Embryos will also produce less interferon tau, so their ability to um, prevent the cow from returning to estrus is reduced. You'll also have negative consequences on steroidogenesis and as a result you get a decrease in hormone production and hormone levels such as progesterone. In the third trimester of pregnancy, so late in pregnancy, you'll get some placental um, function compromise. And this is probably associated with a reduction in placental blood flow and this leads to a reduction in calf birth weights and viability. So even late in gestation you're getting negative consequences of heat stress and in the male you're getting reduced semen quality. Again just to reiterate once again the times of highest risk are the days of service to six days so just before servicing or insemination to six days after service cows are at greater risk of pregnancy loss. The, the effects of heat stress though can also have negative consequences on fertility um, even for cows exposed to heat stress up to almost two months prior to service. So in the week, week prior to insemination even up to five weeks prior to insemination that also had a negative impact on fertility. This is probably related to the progressive development of oocytes. If you remember that it takes oocytes approximately two months to develop from the preantral to the tertiary antral stage, that during that period of follicular development, if cows are heat stressed, then it's having negative consequences on those eggs, and uh, that those negative consequences may be irreversible, and therefore, even after the period of heat stress has passed, some of those cows will experience uh, reduced fertility because the damage has already been done to some of their eggs. How do we minimise some of the negative consequences of heat stress on fertility? First of all, we need to keep cows cool um, when, it's, when it's hot and humid. And we can pay particular attention to the design of houses, um, applying fans to cows, particularly when they're kept indoors or when they're, when they're kept in the, uh, at the yards for milking. Try to provide them with shade, both in the dairy and in the paddock, uh, and also over things such as feed pads if cows are being fed on a feed pad. We can provide them with sprinklers, um, particularly while they're in the dairy waiting to be milked. But to be effective these sprinklers need to saturate the cows to be effective. If it just provides a very fine mist it can have the reverse effect. It can in fact exacerbate heat stress because it can effectively increase the humidity around the cow. Provision of cool drinking water is important both in the paddock um, at the dairy and when cows exit the dairy. On particularly hot days farmers may delay milking um, instead of milking them in the heat of the in the middle of the heat of the summer day they, they might delay milking to after 5 p.m. or in the evening. If cows have to walk backwards and forwards from the paddock to the dairy they can try to arrange it so that they don't have to walk quite as far. It's important to optimise nutrition to compensate for reduced dry matter intake during the summer and provide adequate buffers to help um, buffer the, the in increased room and acidity and to use high quality forages. Because heats are going to be shorter and less intense you need to put more effort into heat detection. You may use AI instead of relying exclusively on bulls particularly if those bulls are going to be affected by heat stress and they may not work as hard and their semen quality may be negatively impacted. In these cases you could use um, semen that's been collected and frozen during the cooler months of the year and should be of adequate quality. You may choose to use cheaper semen during periods of heat stress because you know that 
there's going to be less of the cows are going to get pregnant. So if conception rates are less, it only makes sense not to use your most expensive semen at that time of the year, but to use cheaper semen. Other management things that you can do is to breed more heifers during the hot months. Heifers are less prone to heat stress, they're not lactating, um, they're able to cope better with higher temperatures. So you may switch your breeding from concentrating on cows to perhaps breeding more heifers during the hotter months. You may also elect not to breed during the hotter months and then to breed more cows outside of the hotter, hotter months. You can also try to select cows or use breeds that are more tropi tropically adapted and thermotolerant. The Australian Illawarra Shorthorn is a dairy cow that is more um, uh, heat tolerant than say a high producing Holstein Friesian and you'll see some of these breeds up on the, up on the tab table lands. This is not uh, generally used but it can be used and has been experimentally shown to be feasible. If you collect embryos during the cooler months and transfer them to cows during the hotter months, you may improve pregnancy rates. Of course this is an expensive option so it's not routinely undertaken, but theoretically it can be undertaken and you can improve pregnancy rates through the use of embryo transfer in hotter months. If you're having trouble detecting heat and you must breed during the, the summer, then you can use fixed time AI strategies where heat detection is a problem and um, that way you can just inseminate cows on, at, on a certain day and there's no need to detect heat. So this is just a summary of some of the consequences of heat stress in cows. It causes a reduction in fertility particularly when heat stress occurs um, in, that in that time around the time of estrus to about six days after estrus. But there's also heat also negative consequences in the couple of months um, prior to the onset of estrus where you're going to breed the cow so the egg quality can be affected through heat stressing those cows for several weeks prior to when they're going to be inseminated. Other factors that, are, that are, are caused by heat stress include a reduction in the duration and intensity of estrus, a reduction in semen quality in bulls, Reduced feed intake and the ability to digest nutrients, redu reduced milk production and milk quality, and, ne and a negative impact on cow health and rumen function. Okay, so here's some review questions for you to consider. So I suggest you pause the tape and um, have a go at these questions. Okay, the adverse effects of summer heat and humidity on fertility in dairy cow are most deleterious during the first week of gestation. When air temperatures exceed a cow's body temperature, the only mechanism by which heat loss can occur from a cow is by evaporation. And this is why we uh, use um, fans sometimes in association with um, sprinklers to try to promote evaporation and heat loss through evaporation. Ross Jennings runs a 250 year round calving herd on the Atherton Tablelands. She's noticed that in the months of December to February that her conception rates to AI appear to be about 15% lower than results she achieves during the winter months. Outline some of the reasons why her conception rates may be lower during the summer compared to the winter months. What management strategies could you recommend to decrease the economic impact of low conception rates during the summer? What are some of the mechanisms by which heat stress can reduce reproductive performance in cows? And when are cows most susceptible to negative effects on reproductive performance associated with heat stress? Well, let's look at why conception rates may be lower during the summer compared to the winter months. As we discussed in the lecture, there's a reduction in oocyte competence. There's a reduction in the developmental competence of embryos leads to greater early embryonic loss. So we're getting um, problems with um, early embryonic development and an increase in embryonic loss. There's also lower concentrations of steroid hormones 
as a result of heat stress and this may exacerbate embryonic growth restrictions. For example, if progesterone concentrations are too low following ovulation, embryos won't grow as large, they probably won't produce as much interferon tau and it's more likely for early embryonic loss to occur. What strategies can we use to decrease the economic impact of low conception rates during the summer? First of all we can cool the cows down, um, we can do this through concentrating on, house, on housing design, fans, provision of shade, sprinklers, cool drinking water and to lay the afternoon milking and reduce the distance that cows have to walk to milking. We can optimise their nutrition, we can be more vigilant in regards to heat detection, we can reduce the dependence on bulls by using artificial insemination, we can breed more heifers during the hot, hotter months as heifers are less prone to heat stress, we can genetically select animals that are more uh, thermotolerant or tropically adapted. We could use embryo transfer in the summer months to try to improve our pregnancy rates or we could use fixed time AI strategies where heat detection is a problem. So a number of things that we can do to try to reduce the negative consequences of, um, of heat stress. In addition we could also breed more cows at a different time of the year and, not, and breed less cows during the summer if that's feasible for, for your particular farm. How does heat stress reduce reproductive performance in cows? Well it reduces oocyte competence and it reduces the developmental competence of embryos and so there's an increased risk of early embryonic loss. We get reduced production of interferon tau, a reduction in steroidogenesis and a decrease in hormone production. This result can result in shorter and less intense periods of estrus but also because cows just simply don't want to be that active when they're hot and stressed. In the third trimester of pregnancy we can get a reduction in placental blood flow and this can compromise um, calf birth weight and viability following calving. calving. And in the male we can get a reduction in uh, semen quality. And cows are most susceptible to the negative effects on reproductive performance associated with heat stress minus one to six days post service. Cows are affected at other times but the most severe um, time is uh, negative time is, is during this period within the first week after mating. 